Hi, it's Duncan um, at DuncanBolam.com. I'm a, a purpose coach and I've been doing some, um, pouring some thoughts and connecting some dots in my video thinks um, for a few days now as we step into, um, into middle to late March. I'm not going to give you the date because I'm trying not really to have these thoughts considered chronologically um maybe they each stand by themselves and maybe ultimately if if it works um viewers would get to step back and go ah that's what he was thinking about so where am i going with this i've got um i've got a few ideas in terms of the various influences on my thinking and i'm now about to regret piling about 20 books up on my desk in front of me and standing the microphone, sorry, the, the my phone camera, um, on top of one of the piles, which I now want to refer to. Uh, I'm also, uh, different me compared to my other videos, I'm regretting um, not getting my hair cut before we officially went into lockdown. I'm looking increasingly like a, a 1950s teddy boy, although they probably didn't do the old goatee. And I'm a different person inside, I notice as well. Um, I'm now in my home office, locked down into uh, till further notice. So these are probably I've got a lot. We've been working on clearing the garden outside and got lots and lots of jobs done this last few days. And um, kind of just want to punctuate some thoughts. Well, as I go through some of the influences, um, I'm going to start with a with a book, a couple of books which are underneath this pile. As I move my camera, I'm actually trying not to hold my camera today, so it's going to fall off. There we go, that kind of works. That'll do for now. Um, big book, that big influence on me. When was it written? Let's just, I should have already, already prepared this. So this is kind of really shooting from the hip kind of thoughts out loud. So this book was first written in 1995. Sorry, it's a pretty ominous title. But Jeremy Rifkin was a bit of a um, soothsayer, come clairvoyant, certainly prophet in my reckoning. <sighs> Got a bit of dust on there. Um, he saw a time when, in the days of the emerging markets and uh, Western jobs migrating east, um, he saw the dollar price, the hourly rate of wages increasingly decreasing in the West as they moved over the eastern horizon. And he might even have forecast a time when they come back over the far side of the world and return to the West. Um, good examples being how um, Chinese silk worm um, manufacturers um, lost their, were cut, undercutting Indians um, and working for increasingly cheap rates. Uh, obviously these, the cotton mills and the cotton manufacture and various things that used to be um, a very strong part of the, the industrial um, heartbeat of Great Britain in the uh, 18, 1800s and early 1900s um, were sent overseas because of the reduction, the cheaper wage price so um i'm going to talk more about that on another day um really really pivotal um part of my um 1920 uh, 1920 um 2000 the year 2000 i met this man a man who was going to become my mentor and um and friend for about uh, 18 years until his very sad passing um three years ago it was his birthday just a few weeks ago he'd have been 93 so i met him when he was roughly 73 um and he invited me to go and do his what color is your parachute um training life work plan planning uh workshop in the high desert of oregon um, which is a two week 9 a.m till 9 p.m training course in the most idyllic setting i've probably ever worked in my life um you know, it was quite quite a hard, intensive training, but uh, 
working in the high desert of Oregon and near a place called Bend, um, not f in the Mount Bachelor Resort, was just absolutely amazing. Um, life transforming in, in all kinds of different ways. And I'll probably come back to that book further down the track because that um, I take all my clients through the What Colors Your, Ch uh, what Colors Your Parachute workbook. Um, and then another guy who I've had, I was blessed to actually see speak as a keynote speaker, um, William Bridges, um, a, an amazing prophet. He wrote this book, Job Shift, um, in, again, gosh, would you believe it, 1995. Uh, my version here is um, published in Great Britain in 1996. And his questions in this book were, where have all the jobs gone? The rise and fall of the good job. Everything is a market and running the post job organization. And that segues me into a book over here, uh, which I. Right now, this is really relevant to me because I do genuinely think we are moving in inevitably towards a post industrial world. Um, the economy will be so different. Um, this gentleman who's for me forgive me has the most unpronounceable name dada mahesh varananda if i'm anywhere near is a yogic monk um who has this uh he was a he was a um an understudy of um another remarkable um thought leader um pr sarkas uh, inspired him um, who was the gen the man who uh, came up with the alternative form of, you might call it politics, you might call it philosophy, which is called progressive utilisation theory, otherwise known as Prout, which if we get this right, then we take this massive threat to society uh, posed by um, coronavirus, COVID-19, um, if we take this massive threat, we could slingshot out the other end and turn it into an opportunity um if we if we get this right so i'm building my little pile of books here and uh a pivotal book beyond that which had a massive change massive impact on me the most harrowing tale of Vic victor frankel who um his life work a long manuscript was um robbed from him as he was taken into a concentration camp, a Nazi concentration camp. And probably the only thing that helped him survive his ordeal, graphic, horrific ordeal inside of a concentration camp, was piecing together and, and, and rebuilding that book, which was to end up being called Man's Search for Meaning. And and I can't emphasise enough how my focus in these video things is to help people contemplate their meaning in their life. Uh, perhaps I might call it another thing, which is um, intention. The power of your purpose. Um, Doc Searles talking about thought leaders, this they don't come any bigger or better than this guy, uh, the intention economy. Um, my argument tradition, so much of the time is that 90% of the people I meet are in the wrong job uh, and or not engaged by their work. Or these days, the third classification would be they're not working at all, which is so grim for so many people in the world we're all in this extraordinary position at the same time i'm not quite sure who's safe um people are talking about the amount of deaths will be caused by um the corona um virus covid19 covid19 um but they're they're also forecasting the risk of death caused by economic collapse as well so in terms of uh, preparedness maybe this fallow period where everybody's life work career even going outside into society 
affords us an opportunity to, to spend invest some time in, in thinking about these topics. Um, the next book, and this is again going to be a big focus for me going forward, a huge influence on my thinking. Um, it brings to mind a really, really big controversy, which I'm probably going to invest, I'm going to devote a whole a whole sh video to, is um, the law of attraction has taken the world by storm in the last um, 20 years. Arguably uh, the seminal film which launched this movement regarding the law of attraction is um, The Secret. If you haven't seen it, it's a movie which you can Ideally, you can watch the early versions, which are around about 2003, 4, where some of the, the world's um, greatest thought leaders, I think people including Esther Hicks, um, Jack Canfield, um, Bob Proctor, these are people who are all capitalising on the, on the tsunami of popularity um, attributed to the, to the law of attraction. But I don't agree with it. I did, I did, and then it blew up in my face. And I'm afraid I can't put any other word, apply any other word to it now, having tested it for the best part of 20 years. It is utter and complete bullshit. No two ways about it. Um, what we've actually got to, the law of attraction basically says that if we put out, emanate a force, transmit a force to the universe which is utterly positive and all we think about is uh, is thriving and uh, abundance and visualizing ourselves doing incredibly well all the time that that will just manifest that success will literally just manifest in our lives um but that they're talking to the wrong person about that because we had a an extraordinary tragedy hit our life um in 2014 when we lost uh, a long yearned for child and believe me um, there was nobody more excited and, and invested in the law of attraction than we were at the time in terms of the anticipation and waiting for uh, um, uh, we tried for a child for the best part of 10 years and then we lost him on the day of on his due date and uh, and that um, plummeting from the heights of delight to the depths, darkest depths of despair, that instantaneous collapse um, just seemed to me to demonstrate. And in the last, in the interim five or six years of my recovery um, through PTSD um, and the trials and tribulations of that, um, seemed to demonstrate to me that the people who are most successful in life, it's nothing to do with it, intellect, it's nothing to do with the law of attraction it's to do with how well equipped you are mentally to overcome adversity um, and your dogged innate determination to overcome adversity i'll give you a quick anecdote which i probably i'm, I'm not remembering um, accurately or verbatim but there was a catastrophe um many years ago now um called a, a ferry capsized um traveling back traveling out of um Zeebrugger, I think it was, and it was called the Spirit of Free Enterprise, and um, the many people lost their lives in drowning, and some people her heroically lost their lives, saving the lives of others, you know, giving up their own life, which is the kind of the ultimate sacrifice. They don't come any greater than, than giving up one's life for the life of another. Um, but they it led to a whole bunch of experiments on um, on survival instinct, and. For example, uh, I remember reading about um, an experiment where they put, repeatedly put um, lab rats into a complex maze, put the complex maze into water, and it was all virtually 50-50 who, which rats were going to find a way out, doggedly determined, absolutely instinctually to survive. They would find a way out of the maze, and some of the other, the, the other rats just put their, their paws up and just said, I'm drowned. That's it. It's over. And it's a pretty graphic and perhaps crass example of how important it is to have a, a mindset innate within our being that we are going to we are going to overcome adversity um, at all odds. And I'm at 15 minutes and I've still got a few books to go. So crashing through the rest, 
will I do this now? I'm probably going to just park it there actually. Um, there are over here 